project-based learning it sticks to your heart, sticks to your soul a lot better. A lot of hands-on work. You learn more when you put your hands on something. Our students learned everything from rocketry, robotics, and other forms of engineering mechanics that would help them to be successful. They're learning senior level skills or college level skills. They've already learned how to organize, how to prepare, how to study. We're seeing how much weight will it take to break our test piece so we can see how strong the plastic is. We like to have our students work together in project-based learning to show them what it is to do teamwork, what it is to have challenges, and what it is to produce a product. It wasn't a polarity problem. The propellers were just in the wrong spot. So when I came here and I found like 3D printing, I found rocketry, I found all these amazing things that I could do and I was allowed to do them. Like I could finally like work on hands-on. Which we know from experience is the right way to teach engineers and scientists. We also know it's the leading edge right now for education at the major universities. That's how they teach. My goal has always been to set up the problems for them to solve. And then from that point on, it's on their own. So he came across this website called uh, Enabling the Future. They basically connect people that have 3D printers to people requesting a prosthetic hand. We picked a little girl named Gracie. She was missing a little bit over her elbow. At first I just saw it as a project to finish, but when I saw her, her face, like when I was giving her her hand, it was, it was something bigger than that. Now that I actually saw some results from it, it's really motivating to be able to finish my career and actually be an engineer and be able to help more people out. They're truly problem solvers, and problem solvers do not have boundaries of disciplines. Two years ago, I started this level of rocketry, and I had a small taste of success. Yes! Just a little bitty thing going off is very exciting, so. Can you imagine launching a 20, 24 foot rocket with the same excitement multiplied that many times? It's amazing. Once I got my feet wet, I really felt passionate about it. The important thing isn't really the goal, it's the fact that it's not just building a rocket and launching it, right? Anybody can go get an Estes rocket and go launch it. It's the fact that we're going to teach them the math behind it. The entire goal of the rockets is to achieve an altitude of 100,000 feet. When I was a senior at Texas A&M, that's not what we did. It's beyond what we did as a college senior design program. Since it just cuts off like that, it makes a vacuum. These kids are learning what postgraduate college students are learning. The process of getting a rocket on paper to a rocket at White Sands Missile Range, it's an amazing process. Out of the United States, only five teams were able to get there. And to hear the students present about all the calculations and equations that they went through to build this rocket, it's, it's just awesome. That's very um, exciting, and that's exactly the way we do business here at NASA. As they were counting down, Man, it, it was stressful. It was very, very stressful. It was like probably the most stressed I've ever been in my entire life. Because uh, all the hard work and all the, the sweat and tears, I guess you want to say, uh, like led all to that point. At White Sands, we encountered a problem that we were not expecting. A um, short in the uh, igniters for our engine. I mean, it's a, it's a little, well, it's disappointing. I was in disbelief. It hit me really hard. More than a year's worth of work. Our hopes were so very high. So, we were totally de devastated. If you never fail, you'll never grow. So, don't be too disappointed by one thing. Always try to draw on the good of a failure and learn from it. Test, test, test. That's what we learned this year. We're adding fuses to our ignition lines to make sure we don't have that same failure again. I can't stay down. We're testing igniters. I had to get back up. We're testing fuel ratios. I gotta work harder. We're testing tensile strength. I gotta put more effort into it. And we're actually gonna build a launch tower so we can test. They just have that drive. I told my teammates I'm not planning on leaving. Even though we already graduated, we're still gonna fix that rocket and see if we can get a chance to go back out there. Because I refuse to get that close, have everything go right, but an igniter. Every single day during college, whenever I have any second of free time, I'll be thinking about the rocket. I'm like so into it that really I don't think anybody else can understand. These students are learning early on that they can step up and own being great. I'm testing everything, every time. 
Uh, one of Dr. Lee's students went on to college to Rice University, came to work here. So I've been working as a flight controller for a year now um, in the flight operations division. Nick Robbins, yes. He uh, was the first project manager for the high altitude. In fact, the rocket back there is uh, the one that he was the PM. We did not get off the pad, but that doesn't take back any of the work that we put into it. I mean, it was a team effort. Lots was learned by everybody. Uh, expose it to like oxygen from the bottom. I think it's just the way we mixed it, because I think that's hard now. He gave everything he's got. I became a completely different person at the end of that project. I was a little bit arrogant coming into it. I thought I knew everything. It sort of took me back a step, made me realize what the real world is like, but also prepared me for college. Uh, without something like that, I would not have been as successful in college. I don't think I'd be where I am today. One of the best rewards for teacher is to see students succeed. And look at him, the only thing I could do is smile because you actually succeeded.